This episode of After the Whistle contains profanity. Listener discretion advised. Please enjoy. How we doing? Hey, Pleasure. What's going on? You tired from your travels or what? You know, I'm going to get on a plane here in a few hours, go back to Florida, and then Dallas on Monday. I, yeah. Wow. So I'm everywhere. Yeah, you know, it's, I'm, not, I'm tired because, you know, I've done about 50 interviews and I, everything I have to say is exactly spot on because if I say one wrong thing, then I got fucking, you know, lawsuits coming at me when I'm trying to just protect and, you know, stand by Kyle. So I'm exhausted from that, but hey, you know, that's not, doing the right thing's not always easy. Listen, I know we haven't officially started episode nine here with Brent Sopo, so maybe we, we have. I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll let you look at all this before, but I don't know if you, if you want that on there or not, but how, like, how exhausted are you from all of this? I mean, like, yeah. you, like you must be just completely beat. Yeah, you know, look at me. I'm, I'm, I'm even uglier today than I normally am. Fuck. <laughs> you know, I am. Again, just again, you know, I'm dyslexic, so I really gotta watch every word I say. You know, one for the legal side, but just just trying to be there for Kyle, and I'm the only one that that is speaking, so I'm literally kind of standing on an island by myself. And um, doing the right thing isn't always easy, and it's not easy. But um, I I can't come out. I couldn't come out and say hi. You know, support him, and then walk away. You know, that wouldn't have been fair to him. He's just, he went through the hardest thing of his life, which was coming out the way he did, not resuming to be a Jane Doe. Why are you the only one? I guess it would be my first question. You know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of guys that were, you know, I would imagine that knew and uh, knew the same information, what you have known. And why, why are you? And for that matter, I think Nick Poynton, the only two that have basically stepped up and, and wanted to discuss this. You know, I, unfortunately, you know, I, I can't, I can't, I don't know why, what, you know, I can't comment on what they, you know, are doing or not doing. I just, I knew in San Jose and we came right away to Paul Vincent and within 24 hours, we, you know, we brought it to the upper management of, of the Blackhawks, you know, um, the things that we heard, it was not okay. You know, so we acted right, you know, we acted right away. Um, you know, you take a look. When you say we, who is that? You know, Nick Boyd and I. Okay. You know, um, took it to Paul Vincent and Paul Vincent went and had a management, you know, up meeting next day with upper management. Hey, this is what went on. And that's when we were told, hey, listen, you know, we're going to take care of it. And I don't care what title you have. They're, they're fathers. You know, that's where, where it gets me. I don't care if you're a CEO. I don't care. You left. Imagine if that was your kid. And, you know, when I posted my statement the other day, the amount of people that had direct messaged me that it happened to them, boys, it is fucking out, outlandish. When I'm not talking about one or two, I'm talking double digits, triple digits, people reaching out to me saying it happened to them. It's uh, like, so that it, must it, make you feel pretty good knowing that, you know, speaking up has made a lot of other people maybe a little more comfortable in their own skin for five minutes to be able to write you and say what they say. It's got to be pretty rewarding. Listen, uh, you know, I've always been different. We could all rev, you don't know me, but these other two are, you know, I've always been the weird guy because I've always cared about people, you know, my foundation. And I don't, I, I cried before I, I felt that. And I don't even know if I've ever felt what you, what you just said, because again, we're again, being a father, grandpa, I just think somebody's, that this is somebody's kid that's writing me this. You know, if I can give them, a platform and that's why my foundation i always say you're not alone and and that's just been my message you're not you know come out you know i've been sober five years you got drug problem i'll call, call me i will help you i don't care who you are you know i'll put you i've put people in rehab i don't know i don't care 
I'll live in a cardboard box. I don't care if I can help and impact lives positively. And it just breaks my heart that that many, not like, you know, not one or two, but that many. I'm glad they felt comfortable enough to come to me. Absolutely. But it broke my heart when it's that many. Not right. Like, yeah. yeah, I can, I can see how, how it, how it would be mixed emotions, right? You're overwhelmed by how many and it's, and you're over and you're so overwhelmed by how many that you can't even process the positivity that's coming from it. No, it's not like girls reach out. Hey, let's go out. No, this is the saddest thing that, you know, their lives have been changed mm -hmm. forever. And God, he puts each and one of us on, on a path and, I've pretty much gone through every single thing. So I, I can relate uh, on a few different levels uh, when, when somebody reaches out, out to me and talks to me about that. But just the, I know what all goes into it. It's just, it, it's heartbreaking that it's that many. Like I said, it's not one or two. It's When's the last time you've talked to uh, Kyle? When's the last time you've had communication with him and how is he doing? And I, I know that I, I can't really imagine what he has gone through in, in, in the last number of, of months now that it has come out and now that, you know, the investigation because of guys like you to, to help this process forward um, came to, you know, the, agreement that there was, there was some wrongdoing in, in, in all of this. And now Kyle is not a liar. It's not something that he was, uh, you know, thinking and pretending in his mind. There has to be a relief that he, that he feels the weight off his shoulder, but at the same time is still going to have to deal with this, not only right now, but for the rest of his life. Have you talked to him? How, how's he doing right now? Yeah, you know, I talked to him the other day, you know, for about 30 minutes. But if you, you know, go back to the video uh, when he did his interview, you know, he said that we didn't talk, we didn't have a personal relationship. We didn't. It was the first time I've talked to him in, you know, in 11 years. And I don't need a personal relationship with somebody to do what's right. You know, so he, he sent me a message after he came out. You know, obviously I knew, it was, you know, Jane, I knew who Jane Doe was the whole time and um, kept that quiet. He, he sent me a message on Twitter, like you, Petey, because um, I didn't even have his number. You know, I was doing what's right for, for the human, you know, for, for him and uh, as a man. And we had a great conversation. You know, I had him crying, had him laughing. And I, I said this, I said something to him. I said, I'm glad this happened. And that's going to sound crazy for the people that haven't been affected in certain ways. Because now you can now you change the world cup. Somebody no no positive comes out you know negative comes out of positive, and in the hockey world, you know, if they kept this quiet, we wouldn't be talking about it today. It wouldn't right. be on the front pages of the paper. Yeah, this will. Kyle, go ahead. Go ahead. Right, so Kyle's feeling better because he can start healing now. He yeah. couldn't heal before. You know. The way he was healing, it was the exact same. Him and I, you know, drugs and alcohol. Bury it, bury it, bury it. Now he can feel the feelings and they can be real and he can learn how to, you know, learn his new life because it is a completely new life. Well, I, I said that, Soaps, uh, the last time we talked about this last week when it first came out and that he is literally just starting his process, right? Like he hasn't been able to go through whether it's, uh all the emotions right like anger and and you know you could see in his interview how much it hurt him that it it took so long for it to get to this point that it affected other kids right like it it he was able to go on and continue to prey on other kids and so that affected Kyle just as much as I think what had happened to him is is that guilt but I think speaking about it and coming out and having guys like you step up right away, man, that's, that's a lot of courage. That's a lot of courage on him. And I think we need as a society, take, take hockey out of it, take the NHL out of it. I think it just needs to be talked about. And I think everyone has had somebody very close to them affected by something and it leads them to drugs, alcohol, 
everybody has been personally touched by it and we try to sweep it under the rug or hush hush it if we all just talked about it and supported each other and and, and helped each other heal it wouldn't be so devastating it in in the sense that it wouldn't last so long it wouldn't be hidden it would be out there and people would be able to start their process not 10 15 years later they would start it right away I, for me that's the biggest message is being able to have the courage to step up like you guys did early on. But then now continuing that conversation is going to help society, the NHL, everybody start to talk about this more. And I think that's the bigger message here is that we need to be better. Everybody in, in talking about that, not being ashamed by it. Well, Gio, Everybody's you're, been affected by it. You're, you're absolutely right. And talking about, so you know, so it's having you on, like, like, I don't like to, I mean, unless we're talking about a, a funny hockey story, I always love to insert myself. But when we're having a serious conversation, if I can relate, I, I really, I don't like to try to insert myself or my own experiences in my life. But, but Craig knows, Gio knows, I'll tell you, you know, like my parents know, I was sexually abused when I was a child between the ages six, six and eight. And I'm, I'm certainly much more comfortable now than I was years ago talking about it or even thinking about it. Um, it's accepting it. But, Gio, I, I don't know your past history. I, I, I hope you have not had to ever experience, you know, what I've had or Kyle has or any other victim for, of any matter of a heinous, heinous act. Uh, but, but what you just said is, is absolutely true. There's freedom in speaking. You, you, there's, there's relief. There's like, Oh my God. Okay. Finally it's out there. I don't have to, like, I can tell what the fear was. I like, you don't want to be ashamed either. Well, you know, you it, did nothing it, it, wrong. That's well, that's exactly it. And that's how you're made to feel Yeah, is you're made to feel ashamed at all ages, whether you're, you're one of the actresses in Hollywood that had to deal with uh, Harvey Weinstein or your uh, Brent Sopel or not Brent Sopel. I'm sorry, Kyle Beach. We're talking to Brent Sopel or myself, you know, but Brent, you did say you did allude to personal incidents that, that, you know, made you go down paths that, so, I mean, it, it doesn't matter what it is talking about it, Gio, as you mentioned, and I'll, I'll wrap up my segue here, but is it's therapy. It's therapy. And the first time you do it, the second time you do it, the third time you do it, then it almost becomes like a, for me, it became like an addiction. Like Craig, I told you that day, you were one of the first people on the planet that knew. Okay. Yep. That I felt comfortable actually telling. And I mean, you know, it never changed anything between us. You know what I mean? Like Gio it never no one, no one treats you differently. No one, no one. And if they do, I that's remember their that problem. Too, that's you, their problem. You, you know, you, you expressed that and it came out and I don't know why it came out that day, but it came out that day. And at the end of it, Petey, if you re remember, you apologized to me, you apologized uh, to me. And that, and that's the key. Right you for expressing what you expressed to me, and I looked at you. Well, it's and for said, dumping that shit on you. Like you, no one ever you always think like, man, like does somebody does somebody want to handle that kind of weight? Like, but, but like, it's not a weight. Hey, it's Riff, if you're in what? it together. Really? Like, it's not like a, I'm just it's, trying to have a good fucking day here, man. Like you know what I mean? But that's how you feel sometimes, you know? Like yeah, but why just, did you, why did you tell me? You think I was going to judge you? No, that's why I think you I probably think I told you, right? You uh, sit there and roll my eyes and kind of look at my watch and say, holy shit, I can't wait to get out of this conversation. No, 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 that, no. that's a friend. It's not an yeah. acquaintance. Yeah. That's a friend right there. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know in the hockey world, we have a lot of acquaintances out there. That's right. They all love us for what we did and who we are and what we got. But that's yeah. a true friend, Petey, yeah. right there. No, no, I appreciate you saying that. I've I've always felt that way, but... But Brent, this, this, this all comes because of you. Like this is, you know, we got to, and again, you're shaking your head. No, I don't want the credit, but you know what, for me to be able to say that and talk about it freely and comfortably is, is a lot because of uh, the emotion that you're showing here. I mean, I can tell how hard this is for you to, that you, that you even have to handle all of this and carry this burden. And I think, I think it's incredible what you're doing. I think, 
I said, and I'm not trying to pump your tires. Like I said to, to Gio and Craig, I don't even, I remember you and I hanging together and I remember how much fun we had. I just can't remember where it was. I can't remember if it was PA meetings, if it was charity tours, it might've been a mix of both. Like we were doing hockey charity tours, but I said to Craig and Gio, I said, I said, if, if all of this didn't happen and, 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 and Brent Sopel's name wasn't out there. And I wish, I wish this didn't happen. And I wish your name wasn't out there for all of this because this is horrible that, that this is going on and this went on. But, but I said, and someone came up to me and said, hey, do you know Brent Sopel? My face would have lit up and I would have, just, what did I say? I was like, I said, that is one of the single greatest human beings I've ever met. You, you are, and I, and I think anybody listening to this, and I hope a lot of people listen to this, you're one of the most genuine people I've ever met. That's what Gio said the minute I, I said, hey, uh, Soap says hello. He goes, one of the most genuine guys I've ever met in my life. A little out there, but, I, you know, I, I appreciate. Here's the thing. Everybody, it happens for a reason. Everything in this world happens for a reason. Everything is, like, I've been through rehab. I can go on and on what's happened to me. There's a reason why I was there that day. I'm strong enough now to have these conversations. Am I tired? Yeah. But, you know, I told Kyle, I'm glad it happened because Gia was able to say the same thing. You're comfortable enough to say the same thing and come out. It's all trauma, you know? And I always say, you're not alone. You're not alone. So anybody listening, if you're struggling, reach out to any one of us, reach out to me. I'm there for you. And that's what my message is. You know, I keep saying, Joe, you, you hit it on the head. This is a worldwide thing. I was on a podcast with Theron Fleur the other day. He said, on an average, these guys have 126 victims before they ever get caught. So they make you feel alone, hey, Petey? They make you feel like it's your fault. And I go back to Gigi, what you said. I think if you ask Kyle, he felt a million times worse when he found out what happened to that other kid and that's when he broke. Yeah. Okay, it happened to me. Okay, it happened to me. But when it happened to somebody else through me, that's when he broke. And I can only imagine what the drug and alcohol that he went to to bury that. Not what happened to me, what happened to him. And he's like, it was my fault. It was my fault. No, it's not your fault. They make you think it's your fault. I played in Swift Current, Graham James. I was with Aaron Fleur the other day. Text with Sheldon Kent. Like, so I'm embedded deep because there's a reason why. You it was know, like 96. The documentary to here to change the world because that's literally what I wanted. I remember when Sheldon Kennedy came out and started talking about that and everything. And I just remember I was a teenager and I just remember the emotions that it was bringing out in me because it reminded me because I was so young that you're almost kind of like able to box it out, but then you're, you know, you're like, uh, wait a minute. You know, I don't ever want anyone to find out about, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, it's uh, Sheldon Kennedy and, you know, Theo Fleury. Yeah. I, I, I just, I, I just, I thought when that came out, I net, that's what, you know what? So when I, when I, when that came out, I thought the whole world would know who Graham James was. I couldn't believe he was coaching again. I couldn't believe that he wasn't, that he was, I couldn't believe that he was actually still alive. Like, like for me, I have, I have a theory. People make mistakes, uh, you know, you know, in terms of, you know, accidents happening and, and, but, but these kinds of acts, like you literally, you, you may not be killing somebody, but you are, you're, you're altering someone's life forever. And I just think if you're, if you've been charged of a, of a sex crime of a child or, or any kind, you're, you should be dead. Well, you should be dead. Theron you should never have a, You should never have another chance. He works with these guys in prisons. And he said to me, he said, he tell, they tell him all the time, keep me in here. Because my urge is strong in my common sense. I'm going to do it again. That's what Theron said. He works with them. You know, I, I didn't even know what to say. So exact to follow up what you just said, that's what they tell him all the time so i, I want to ask sorry. you something like to go back 
2010, you guys are, you know, what was it? Right before the finals, you guys <laughs> all yeah, found it, it, yeah. Is it right, and, you know, that San Jose jersey right above your head? That's when we were, it was in the Western Conference final when it happened, when, when, it, when we went to them, you know. We went to 24 hours right away. Went to them and they said, we'll handle it. We'll take care of it. Again, I don't care if you're a CEO of, you know, Microsoft. I don't care if you're CEO, I'm just naming companies, the biggest companies in the world, Apple. I don't care what, when, as a father or mother, you expect them to do what's right. You know, How are the so players in the dressing room dealing with this? Going into, you know, obviously this is extremely difficult to hear. Now, I know that a lot of these players, or probably 99% of them, didn't even know Kyle Beach because he was a call-up, correct, from junior? Um, you know, it's, he was actually just came out of junior. Yeah. So he was a first-round pick. His junior season ended. He went up to Rockford. They lost up and then came up for a black ace. So this was – he just had turned pro, and I don't even know if he got a paycheck on the pro level yet. That's how fresh he was into this environment. Yeah. So when the players learned of this and were like, how did you guys react to this? How did you guys take in this information? Like, I know, obviously, you and Nick Point and stepped up in a big way and, um, you know, did what you had to do. But how, how was the dressing room, you know, in, in all this? You know, it was, you, you know, task at hand. You know, we're in the Western Conference final. You know, and everybody, um, you know, because Brad was still working. You know, there's a lot of question on, um, you know, how they handled it. Well, they obviously didn't didn't handle it. Did we? we did they? Did we think that it was going to be taken care of after the final? Did we? Did they have a conversation? They said they would. I didn't. You know, we didn't go back and question it because when you're told something, that's like a you know going to your HR in you know in corporate America. They look at you, okay, you know, we're going to take care of it. Those, those are pretty, pretty powerful words. So, um, you know, we had a task at hand. You know, obviously end up winning the Stanley Cup. And from that point to I won the Cup and traded, I think it was like four weeks, and I was never part of the organization again. So I never saw the guy again because I wasn't part of, you know, I got traded right away. So how did they handle it? You know, didn't go back and question that's not, you know, that's not a place to go and question. You can't call it corporate America. Hey, hey, how, hey, did you take care of that? You know, when you're not even working for that company, no, it doesn't yeah. work that way. And you guys know, you, you know, president of the company, the GM, you know, um, they're your bosses. They said they're going to do something. You know, they said they're going to trade my ass. They trade my ass, right? They fall through, they fall through on everything else. I'm going to send your ass to the Myers. I was in the Myers. There's, you know, so we expected them to handle it. And now, what that handle is, I don't know because handling it for a PD when it happened to you would be different than would be happened to me. Every person is different. Every situation is different. So didn't question. I just expect. Well, but I think you 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 stepped up and did something right away, right? You yes. handled it in the sense that you brought it. You you started the conversation, and in your mind, right? You go back and you start playing. You win. Like you said, you get traded, uh, and he he eventually gets released that that time too. So you're like, oh, maybe it was handled. They took care of it, and and you don't know anything beyond the fact that you brought it up. Eventually, it was uh, he he was relieved of his duties, however you want to call it. Moved on, and they they parted ways, not the right way, not handled the right way. Now in hindsight, but in your mind at that time, you think that you know, maybe what you had done had, had taken care of it. It wasn't my place. You know, it, I was there to support him. You know, people are saying, why didn't you call a cop? It wasn't my place. It yeah. was strong in numbers. Not, not at strong all. Strong in numbers, and you're, you're trying to add support. Yep. And, uh, Brian, you, no, man. I mean, it, no. Someone says to you, why didn't you call the cops? No, it's – no. No, no, no. Um, that's absolutely – Well, I've, I've heard so, from so many people – you know, saying, well, the players knew about it. They should be suspended too. And I'm like, there's, there, I understand that, 
but I think there was players like yourself, like Nick Boynton, that went to a higher authority, um, Paul Vincent. Paul Vincent says, I will take care of this. He went and did what he had to do. He had a closed-door meeting with all of the top executives in you know, a, a billion-dollar organization. You would think that the chain of command is the one that has to deal with this. It's very, very serious. Now, the players – as much as you guys knew about it, it was not your place to do, or, or, or you could have, but it wasn't your place because it was, it was moved to a, a level that that's their job is to deal with it. Right. And I, I, you know, I've had discussions with so many people, like they're talking about the players or should be suspended because they knew about it. Well, it, it, you know, I, I don't even, I don't even know how to answer that question. And, and that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, obviously you guys talked about it in the dressing room, multiple days, everybody knew about it. And, you know, it's, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to understand like as, as from a player being in that environment, being in that situation, trying to stay focused on something that you play your entire life. Like yeah. we're, we're, we're all little children. Okay. We're all little children playing in the NHL. We're just playing at the highest level now. And we're trying to win the greatest prize that we could ever imagine. And that's to hoist the Stanley cup. And you guys had a task at hand. Um, And you guys did what you had to do by going to the higher authority so they can deal with it and take care of it. And you guys had to still do what you had to do. And that's prepare for the Stanley cup. One guy, you know, in the locker room, you know, gee, you were a captain. You represent us all. Did an amazing job, too, um, at it. So one guy, you know, when you walk in that room, you represented all of us. So we talked about it, you know. So the seventh defenseman or the fourth line, we're all the same thing as, as your first line center or the backup goal. We took it to them, you know, and – for any of us to call the police or something like that, that's that's not our place our place we did our thing we took it to the people higher than us that we went as high it went as high as it can on the hockey chain side of you command know, yeah you know people don't understand that you know the chain of command is is different in corporate america you know then that you know we took it to the ceo in corporate america terms and said he's the one that said he'd take care of it out of respect for obviously the everything that's going on and, and what you can and can't say, are you are you able to talk about the last couple of days? Uh, not really. You know, okay. I got uh, you know, yesterday was a great conversation, still to go. Say but... no more. Say no more. Do you want us to edit this out? Do you want us to cut that? We can. Oh, we can. No, you can. You know, just leave it at that. I can't. I'm not. You know, I'm not going to get into what we had, but. Uh... But about, are you allowed to say who? who you met with or <laughs> yeah. okay all I, right. think, I think it's out there already he was out there on social media and that was i met it? with gary you know um you know i had a good conversation with gary and uh we'll see uh you know see where where it goes there's you know say no more hey i say, go back say no, say this no is more. a world thing i it's not an nhl thing just an nhl it's an nba it's nfl you know it's a major league baseball it's corporate america it is the world Thing. Catholic the fact Church that I got everywhere as many messages as I did, and majority of those people they're not pro. None of them, are, you know, every single one of those messages was not from one retired athlete. It was, it happened to me in this, you know, Hockey Canada, USA Hockey at at, at a younger age, and um, so it's it's a worldwide epidemic. Epidemic. I'll, I'll call it what it is, epidemic, because there's no way I should get that many messages. You're five and a half years sober. Yes. How long in did you? I'm nine and a half. How long Damn, into congrats. sobriety? Yes, yeah, same to you. How long into sobriety did you wake up and you're like, so this is what clarity feels like. <laughs> By the time I detox my ass out of all, everything I was doing and. I was buying my ecstasy Molly by bags of a hundred at a time, kilograms of fucking Coke. So I was almost dead before I was 40. I had an intervention and thrown in a rehab. So literally almost dead before 40. 
So when, by the time I detox everything out of my system, like. And when when did that start? Oh, like, when did you start? You know, getting into all of that stuff. Obviously, you know, hockey and drinking go hand in hand. I used to say I used to ice from the inside out. You know, ten, twelve beers from cold beer. You know, coke and I used to Canada. I used to laugh at that saying too. Yeah, and you know, and I, that wasn't just it. But after the game of hockey, you know, I'm dyslexic, so I was reading at a grade four level in high school. So I have a hard time reading and writing. Nobody would hire me. I couldn't get a job. So I'm like, I got divorced. As you, you know, can't provide. What am I going to do? The only thing I knew was taken away from me. So I got worse and worse. Get up Friday morning, go to bed Sunday night. Get up Friday morning, go to bed Sunday night. No idea where I was, who I was with. I had to look at my you know, receipt, my Uber receipt on my cell phone to see when I got home. And my parents are all, you know, all my family's in Canada. They came to a wedding and, you know, messed up a buddy's wedding, million dollar wedding. And I got thrown in. And like I said, I was almost, I wouldn't have made my 40th birthday. Took away, you know, as men, we just want respect and be able to take care and provide for our family. And I couldn't. So that's where the sober came in. That's where I started the foundation. And, um, you know, here we are today. For you. That's unreal. Because I, I, like I've said, I've seen it firsthand, not myself, but, and I, I have no problem. I'm not ashamed. Uh, um, but the individual is still going through a very hard time right now. Me and PD have talked, uh, about it. I've leaned on him a bit because in, in my mind, I, I've never, I've always enjoyed beers. I've never, uh, stuff like that. I enjoy being with guys, but it, it's never been a, a nightly thing. It's never been a thing I had to do. So I'm very fortunate that way. And I know that it's affected a lot of people. So I've had to learn myself in order to help support. I've had to learn myself how everything works and, and what drives it. And, and it's, at the end of the day, it's a trauma at, of, of some manner, right? And whether that's a trauma of, of horribleness of, of sexual abuse, or it's a trauma of like, you talked about just a little thing like dyslexia and, and going through school and having to deal with stuff like that, that is a trauma too, that, that affects people in different ways. And so that's why I'm the more I'm new in my journey in understanding it all too. Right. And so the more we can talk about it, the more people, understand it the more people can lean on each other and i think that's just for me that's just so so huge because there is no uh you, there there's nothing to be ashamed of um everybody needs help at different times and 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 i think as a world we need to support each other better and well, i think it's this, not an easy place <laughs> no and it, it's been it's it's been amplified uh, over the last you know 18 months with with the with, with COVID epidemic, you know, it's just, we need to support each other at the end of the day. And I think it's just, it's about like you touched on very early on in the episode, being a good human being and trying to make each day better for everyone. And I, listen, I, I appreciate you coming on and talking about your personal story, talking about a hard cow beach story, but I think for the listeners, it's going to be huge. You know, I always tell, you know, PD, until you've walked down the same street, there's two, I always say there's first Ave and second Ave. PD and I live down at second Ave. You know, and second Ave is, you know, somebody ODs on drugs. Everybody's like, oh, just stay away from there. No, we run towards it. And we want it because we know it's great stuff. That's just a, a way I like to lay it out there for people because they don't understand how our world works. They, you know, more no, no, normal human beings are going to stay away, run away. No, we run to it. So uh, just to. Well, I had a stranger, I had a stranger run to me, run, running, like heard me talking one day on the radio when I was live on the air, turned his car around and came and talked to me. Mm -hmm. I'm still right. friends with this person to this day. And I'll never forget this person. His name's Jeff Friedman. And I'll never forget it. He just, he's like, Petey. It doesn't matter what he said. He just he pulled yeah. over and he's like, I'm sober, you know, like I, I did a lot of dumb shit. And he's like, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm clean now. I did this. I almost lost this. I, da, 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 da. And he, he's just like, he's just the greatest guy. And I, I, you know, and I, 
you know, I find people that are open about their trauma to be the most laxed in life. I really do. I mean, when they're, when they've started to heal, like I was about to ask you, so why is that though? Because the weight, acceptance, 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 the weight, weight yeah, like the comfort, like there's no more, you know, like I feel like actually people know me now, you know, they know the real me. Like there's no, like, there's no, like, here's give yourself credit here. underneath the curtain or behind the curtain is this dark broken soul. It's like, it's a, it's totally different. And I was just going to ask you, so it's like, and you were about to say something, but I, I, I've noticed that I like to dominate conversations, but it has, there been a point yet and, and nothing's funny, not about, I'm talking about our own lives, our own personal lives, not someone else's, our own personal lives. Nothing is funny, but have you been able to, to laugh at some of the shit you did like that led you that led you to sobriety and like <laughs> because i you know you talk, I, like i you know how to tell stories but i mean like i just like you you don't get to you don't go to rehab or you don't go sober <laughs> some people just do it because they're like oh, i felt shitty when i did it but other people are like i had to do it and i had to do it but then i just think back i think about the there are some really th- things i'm just like no 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 and then there are some things where you Didi, do me a favor. See, just I like, still remember back years and years ago when we were. I know you have a couple stories you want me to forget, Riv. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to tell you this. I still remember this six foot four, 255 pound guy in a pair of white underwear and a white uh, collared shirt from uh, tom cruise and what is it Ri- risky uh, business the risky Jocks. business that was my halloween party costume it was incredible you walked around the entire night in the middle of, it was like i think well it would have been uh halloween i think oh wait are you talking at millsy's event the 80s event i did that there too i went to this big <laughs> event dressed as tom cruise and risky business tidy whities i wore two tidy whities because i had two pairs because i knew somebody was going to try to tear a pair off i had no shirt on you walked around with a pair of tidy whitey underwear yeah you had socks on though yeah well that was a fun night though riv i mean why are you trying to we can't ruin that's a nor- hey riv that's a normal night for us <laughs> <laughs> jesus that was only at eight o'clock riv what was eleven thirty like <laughs> <laughs> no it's, 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 Wait till we put the boogeyman mask on. (laughs) I wore the scream mask. Can I wear the, can I wear the scream mask? The mask from scream. But you you should be proud because you are sober. And I want to get back to what you said. You did the hard work to be okay with you today to stay sober. Cause I always joke. Thank you. Oh, I got to play sober golf and have sober sex for the rest of my life. What? but it's feeling the feeling sober and that is the hardest most beautiful most real thing that i've ever had in my life and i told that to kyle there's not a lot of real things in this world and when you can feel those feelings you know sober and feel them really feel them your life starts changing Am I wrong, Petey? How long before that happened for you? You know, you went through your intervention and went into rehab, and it, it, it very apparent it probably took a while to clean yourself up oh. mentally, physically, emotionally. And at what point in time do you feel that, that you've gotten to a place where you're, where you're happy with where you're at? How long did that take? Or are you, you know, still dealing with it today? And I, and I think that's what, that's the key word. It, it's every day. I think the hardest thing in the world is, you know, self-reflect, but that's how you grow as a person. You know, during this whole COVID thing, you know, I think, you know, for me, God was talking, you know, sending us all a message, stay home with your family, connect with your family, do some work on yourself, do, do the hard stuff. The people who did are okay. The people who didn't, they're the ones that are trying to control what they can't control, you know? So it's every day, you know, something new happens to each one of us different every day. That's life. That's human. But I have to go back and reflect on it to stay sober. So I think most sober people are real because if we're not, we're not going to stay sober. And if we're not sober, we're going to be dead. If I have a beer, 
If it tastes so damn good, you'll never see me again. I can smell a beer now. I can hold a beer, a full beer bottle up to my nose and <sighs> picture myself on a dock on a sunny day and just be like, that's all I need. Yeah. Now you, you put a glass of scotch or booze under my, I'm under my nose. I'm going to vomit. Like I can't drink great Gatorade because it reminds me of great <laughs> vodka shots. Like, I'm like, it just makes me eh, eh, like I start. Oh, anyway, listen, but how do you, how do you get to that point that like I've said that to you, PD, too, right? After a charity I've, game, we, we beers get tossed around. I failed like three times, one. Gio. I failed I, three times. I, I failed. Know. But, but what I'm saying eat. is, how do you, as a person, so take me, I'm here, I crack that beer. I immediately, that day, I remember it vividly. We're in the locker room. I go, I pop, uh, pop the beer, and I look across the room, and I see you, PD. I'm like, shit, I just messed up. Like, how am I a good friend, acquaintance, whatever you may be, and I'm sitting here popping a beer in front of somebody that, and, and I don't know who's, who's, who, who's. That's not your problem. What, that's, that's exactly. Not your, that's Geo. That's, that's not, not your you. problem. I, I if I, but I feel like I need to support you And if I can't handle it, no. If no. I can't handle it, I leave. Correct. Like, Geo, like if you come change. over to my house, like if you come yeah. over to that, my does house. Does that not because, isolate you even more that you have to leave? You're the one no. leaving. Why can't we as a group help support you? Because it's. That, well, let me, I'm just going into saying, my. I'm can't just going ask into everybody to shut their. Can't ask everyone to shut their world down for right. your own growth. Like it's again, it's that. Uh, it's that. Look, I, like here's maybe a little pat on the back, but it's it's. You know, I'm weak in some ways. Like you put a rigatoni parm from chefs in front of me, fucking thing is done. I have no. I like I don't have no desire to drink. Your dad body I, I, looks good. What's that? Your dad body looks good. I've worked on that. I've worked on that, but dad body, to be quite honest with you, it's gone the other way. But Gio, I appreciate what you're saying. And I, I, I'm sorry for cutting you off, but I say this adamantly. If you blow your knee out, do you travel with the team? No, I, I what do you do? You yeah, but, isolate but take yourself and you go and you, and you rehab your knee and you, you build your knee. Now, maybe this is a bad analogy, but it's, you know, it's like, and, and if, if the guys are going on the ice and you're all with the team, they're going on the ice, you're going back in the training room. It's like, it's, so it's, flip we're, that, always, we're always in rehab. Yeah, flip so, that, in my you mind. Example for myself, when I came out of rehab, I moved apartments. No, I didn't go I to moved. rehab, just, just so you know. Yeah. I, so I said we're always in rehab, but I, I feel like I, but I yeah. just have no disrespect so, uh, to someone who actually I went have, to rehab. We, we changed, you know, not you guys. So I had to move my apartment. I had to move the town I was in. Because that same stop sign that I hit when I was drunk, that same dealer that lives in that house, it's the same. So we change. So we, we're trying to change for the better. You guys don't. Yes, yeah, you're supporting us, you know, is it, being a, a true friend of what you are. But if we, we're the ones that are in the whole true process of changing, it took me back, Ray, your question, it took me over a year to be okay with who I am. And then, like he said, for us to leave, you're not isolating us. Absolutely not. I take it if I flip yours, and I know it's not a great analogy, PD, in the sense that we, we all played. We all got injured. We all felt the isolation that you feel when you're injured. You're not out there helping your team. You're not all that stuff, right? So for me, that isolation part still plays a factor. I, I know where you're going with the analogy. Now, might not have been a great analogy, but no, no, but I, it is. But I, I get it. And so, when but I was injured. Those, it wasn't isolation; it was paradise. Because then I wasn't getting <laughs> punched in the head every night, so it was perfect. And I'm not getting hung over anymore. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like it's, it's, the, it's the same thing. It, it's the equivalent. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, but so help me, okay? So in my personal thing, somebody's at rehab. They come out, and and I get you have to change all of your your lifestyle that was before but i'm i'm a very close person and so you're not changing and cutting me out of that so now how do i help support that in the immediate as you're still working on yourself because once you get out of rehab you're 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 still starting the process like you you've you've gotten past a point but there's still a big process to be had I We're want trying to, to be, integrate and, and your for new the, you. And for the listeners, and, and for me, how do we help in that? Because I don't know. I've, I've never been there. I haven't been in yours and PD's situation. So 
I think for the majority, as I say, this is a huge world issue. And if we talk about it, we can help each other. And so I'm looking to help. And so how do I know what is right as far as supporting and also do you, do you see where I'm trying to get at it? Is it no, I, go, go for it? No, 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 no. It's, it's a great question. But I mean, if, if go, go ahead. Listen, I couldn't go into a bar for over a year. So I couldn't put myself in that situation. So Petey wouldn't be playing hockey knowing those beers are coming. You know, so we're, we're not, we, we knew what's going to happen. We have triggers. I knew, like, you know, like I said, it took me a long time to even golf because I'm awful and golfing and drinking go hand in hand. So it took me a while to be okay to golf. I had to be okay with who I was to put myself in situations. It's not you, Gio. No, no. It's us, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I know. And and I, 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 I get that 100%. I'm just, as, as somebody that can help and help yeah. support and, and, and friends and family and whatever it may be. Ask. Ask a question. Yeah. Now, like, don't, go, don't go pick up a guy at <laughs> – don't go pick up someone who's just, like, you know, started to, to quit something or out of – Ah, you got it. You got it. You're good. I got, it, I got it. Don't go pick somebody up out of rehab or, or someone like myself who's fresh trying to, to be sober and say, hey, you want to go sit at the bar? Clearly. You, you just have Clearly. a water and eat a chicken sandwich. I'm going to have a few beers and Clearly. and then bury a few wins. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, but, so it, I guess it's, it's a, a matter of, of, of the individual understanding when they're okay with being able to be put in those situations. But, you know, it's... It, it, I, I'm just trying to help, right? Like you're, you're trying to help. And there's a lot of people that are trying to help in the, in the process that, that, that love you and that, that support you. And they just want to know what to do. And, and I'll, I'll even go further. So if you say, ask a question, I'm going to be honest. When I, when I talk to this individual, I don't want that to be the only thing that comes up every time I talk to him, because that's not what defines the person. That's no. not what, I see in the person. I want to have normal, uh, real conversations, but I also want to respect and check in and, and see how things are going. So it's a fine line, and you're always trying to figure that line out on my end. And it, yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably different on your end and whatnot, but uh, talking is therapy. I get that, but it doesn't need to be all-consuming because then, then it's just beating the person over the head with – because they feel ashamed as it is. And I, I don't want that, that shame to continue every day. That's – if that if that if that is a worry, then that person is in, an, in isn't you don't even have to ask a question if this makes sense because he's not ready. Yeah. Like Pete and I can go in the bar together. You know, I don't. I can sit there all day long. I've, you know, listen. I'm single. Trying dating people. Trying to find. Try and find a sober date. It doesn't work. You know. So that's no problem. But if that question has to be asked, you if it's on your mind all the time, where he's not protruding on saying he's in a good position that answers your question without answering the question if that makes sense yeah yeah and, and i'm not talking about hey listen grabbing him and going to a restaurant and bar like that's yeah, yeah. not the situation no, 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 i'm talking no, about no, but i, I, I get what you're saying the as you talk about it i'm gonna get the cues that hey uh, you're getting in a better place you're talking about it more uh you're okay with it and and things like and i, I don't maybe i'm not using the right words with you no no okay you're right no, you know, and, you know. and this is great question geo because Petey and I live in that world. We're on Second Street. Everybody else is on First Street. So I think I think the the thing to think about is you know it, it's a, it's a, obviously an uncomfortable, touchy situation when you know someone that is dealing with this and you're trying to tiptoe around it and you're trying to do what's right for them, but the the understanding is they have to almost recondition themselves. They have to work on themselves. They they have. Um, condition themselves that soon as they enter a bar or soon as they see, you know, alcohol, then it's like Pablo's dog. It, I mean, they're, they're starting to salivate and they haven't even touched the, the bottle yet. Um, it's going to take time for whoever has these issues to recondition them, their bodies, their minds, their, the way they, they deal with themselves to be able to go back into those bars and not have the same feelings. Like Petey can go into a bar. I don't have any problem whatsoever sitting down with Andrew and ordering a beer and having a drink 
because I oh, think I went up to Riv's fridge. I went up to Riv's fridge. We were at his house a few weeks ago, and I went up. I go, can I have another one of those sparkling uh, raspberry waters? So I gather up in the fridge. He's the host. I, mean, I assume you would have got one, but he's like, they're, they're up in the fridge. I'm eight stairs up. He goes, hey, Petey, bring four beers down. I go, Who's, who are the other ones for? He goes, look at, look at him lean back. Look at him lean back. <laughs> He goes, well, they're not for you. <laughs> but no. Wait, but you're you're very far on your journey, right? Like it, it's for, so yeah. that's yeah, exactly I, that's why I pose the conversation. He's reconditioned and, himself. Yes, yes, and you know, I he's in a 100%. good he's in a good state in his mind and he's strong. And now it's like, you know, he's living his new life. Yes. Right. And he's so, happy. How but, many but, how sorry, go ahead, Ray, No, no. Ahead. I mean, these conversations are happening because yeah. of the what's happened and transpired over the last couple of weeks, right? We wouldn't be on this talking about it and, and, and going in depth and, and, and talking about the struggles if it wasn't for an unfortunate situation. So like, that's what the courage, whether it's you soaps or, or beach and, and, and Boynton, like that's what it has brought about. And I, that's, I love it. How small did your world get soaps when you uh, went into rehab and then just came out and knew that when you had to be sober, that there was a lot of people in your life that were close to, or you thought were close to you, that you oh, thought had your best interest. Like I had a lot of barstool friends, like barstool yeah. buddies, man. They were, they were just like, and that's the thing. Like I had, I had such a big group of, Mm, people That's why acquaintances, acquaintances i always say people i knew i always said friends uh, people yeah. i knew that would like a group like a group of people on monday hey we're meeting at this the normal place on monday but those people didn't know the people on tuesday so they wouldn't know that i was at it two days in a row then maybe, I, then maybe i'd take wednesday off and then i'd have thursday where my thursday you know friends yeah. were like hey you want to come out it's the thursday group we got darts tonight you know like they didn't know my Monday, Tuesday group. And then I went downtown on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, where it's very normal to be downtown Friday, Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, and that's what happened. Like all my family's in Canada. So there's no, there's no other alcoholic or dry act in my family. They don't know the word rehab. They don't know. So my parents came down for a wedding. Went out downtown Chicago Friday night for dinner. I buried a bottle of vodka at dinner. Oh, you're on pace for a good night. Yeah. Then I went out. My parents are like, what the fuck? Well, then I go to the wedding the next day, and I've got my little tickle trunk of Molly XG Coke, and I'm lipped out of my mind and started a huge brawl. And But my parents never, you know, back to your question, they had no idea what I was doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That was the first time they're like, this guy's out of control. Yeah, you and can't you, do that and fun. stand awesome. up. Yeah, you can't do that and stand up if it's like a once a week thing. No, I buried a bottle of vodka at dinner. Tavern on Rush, boys. You know where you oh, know, yeah. get triangle. You all know where it is. Right across Inside. from Gibson's. Yeah. <laughs> you used to hit Gibson's, get the get the big steak, get a carrot cake, and then head over and fill oh. your belly even more with some beers across the street. Go have a you know, little dessert, barley sandwich, or you know, two or ten. I always said, you know, you're born with two hands for a reason. Double fisting everywhere you go. <laughs> and then, you know, I left rehab, and, you know, to talk about it. I had to get rid of every single one of my friends. I got rid of everybody in the hockey community. I, you know, everybody does it certain ways. I had to because, you know, you guys, drinking is all we know. And I loved every sip of it. So for the first year, once I got a rehab, I didn't speak to anybody. You know, a couple of my buddies refused to talk to me. So literally, I, I did a year journey alone. Got up at 5, 5 a.m., yoga, 5.45 a.m., you know, meditated, pray. you know. That was my journey for a whole year. I did it alone. And everybody's got a journey. How you get sober. That's why COVID was so hard for drug addicts and alcoholics. Because we all got sober one way. In COVID, that changed. We had to find another way. And it, it was drastically. There was a lot of relapses. Because there was only one way. And that was, it was, a long, it was the longest year of my life. But the best year of my life. And I had to do it alone. You know, and 
when I, I counsel people, I always say, you got to go back and clean your closets out. And for visual purposes, zero to five, six to 10, you can't leave anything in those closets because if you do at some point in time, it's going to open the door and it's going to scream its head. And the longer it's in there and when it comes out, it is awful. And each time you don't go back and comes out, it gets worse and worse and worse. And it took me a long, I'm still cleaning out those closets, but I have to go back every day and evaluate my life and where I'm at and, and what I'm doing. And yeah, I always say those acquaintances are no longer acquaintances. Rowdy, are you accepting of all this? Yeah, yeah. I am. Sounds like Again, you are. It's made me strong enough to have a conversation and be able to be here for Kyle. Not me, for Kyle and for every victim out there. This isn't about me, it's about Kyle and every victim that doesn't want to come out and is a victim. You know, that's why I'm here today. Oh, Where can people you. find that's you? Awesome. Where can people find you? You know, I'm all over social media. You know, um, you know, I'm the foundation, parentalthefoundation.org in, in the US or .ca in Canada. You know, send me an email, we'll get back to you. Social media. Uh, I will always get back to you at some point in time. I will respond to everybody. Sometimes it takes longer than others with all this going on, but anybody, and when I say anybody needs something, please, I will help you any way I possibly can. Yeah, uh, this might sound really messed up, uh, but for as difficult and as hard uh, as these conversations have been today, I have... I, I feel, I, I, I don't know. I feel great after talking to you guys. I, I really do. And Gio, your, your friend, anytime, you know, you need one of us to talk to him. I, I don't need to offer Brent. He already no. has offered that he's yeah. there. And yeah, I know, yeah. you know, me, you got my number Pass my number, Gio, you need to call me day or night, middle of night. Call me. My phone never gets turned off. Because I don't care if somebody's reaching out, I'm going to answer. So like Petey said, you have my number, you need it, he needs it, whoever needs it, it's there. Listen, that's huge. And I appreciate it. I appreciate the support. And it's the, the people around the individual who's struggling need just as much support at times because we're trying to navigate something we've never had to navigate before. Right. And that's what I've seen personally is I'm looking for answers. My uh, me being naive to it or whatever the word is that you want to say me not having that experience inexperience with it you're just trying to do the right thing and support in the right way and help and so like I appreciate the support I appreciate you being open and and uh like you said everyone's journey's uh different and this individual is still early in the journey and, and not ready to 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 have that spoken or i don't want to speak on behalf of somebody publicly for it but um, just being there just being there and that, like they may never lean on you they may never lean on you but they know you're there i mean there are people uh, my world now is smaller than it's ever been by design <laughs> and yeah. i can tell you that if you're i probably text, happier than you've ever been oh uh, if i text somebody like if if, if, if I, that mean they know they mean something to me you know like if I respond to somebody, they know they mean something to me. And I, I you know, I, it just, just knowing that somebody is there, okay, is, especially when you're comfortable enough to talk, and that's you, when you're you know. having this conversation and saying your things he said, you mean more to this individual than you will ever understand. Yes, because you're trying to figure out, and it's got to be hard walking on the eggshells because yeah. you're, it, because you don't want to relapse. You don't want to do something. Yeah, to make you're, tick, you're not yeah? trying to walk. You're not trying to walk on eggshells. You're trying to respect uh, the individual. If, if in my mind, I'm trying to respect, I'm trying to support. I'm trying to, the biggest thing I'm trying to learn for myself how to, to help. Right. And yeah. like we've said, we've, 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 we've hit it. It's we've, we've, it, it's support. It's trying to do the right thing and it's uh, being there for people. And that's all that it is, is it, it's just love for the person next to you at, at the end of the day. I have, I have one question for you, Gio, before we let you go, I, I, let all you guys go. But does the person that you're talking about accept that they had an issue? Well, I mean, we, like, let, let's face it, we've uh, had the intervention, quote unquote, whatever you want to call it, uh, 
they're in rehab uh, now, and it's uh, it's very early in the journey. It, it, it's so I, I don't know whether it's accepted. It's it's been talked about, and I, I see huge gains and progress. Um, I just hope the momentum continues to, to go because it is, it's, it's, it's a long time. And you guys are talking five and a half and nine years. That is such a huge journey that you've been on to get to this point. It's unbelievable to see. It's unbelievable to see where you're at. But it, I also know in the back of my head and what you guys have talked about, it's a daily, daily self acceptance, daily self check in, daily self uh it's all tell this person you know know what i mean like they win they win every day they win exactly i had i had somebody who went to rehab say to me you win every day even if you have a shitty day you Mm. still have a victory at the end of the day and something that a lot of people doubt that you can do and something that even you might at times have doubted that you can actually do and and you don't rest on that every day but there are days where i'm like you know, you're just, I'm like, holy shit. It's been like, and you actually know how long, nine years and seven months. Oh my God. Like it's, it's flown by, you know what I mean? Like, uh, so you, you have, you have little goals. I mean, we've talked, Rim and I have talked to somebody recently who is, who has quit drinking and, and you know, they tweet about it. Mike Ratchuk, thousand days and this and that. And he's been very vocal about it too. I love people that do this. I love it because there's less of them than the others. And, and, and I like being unique. I, I, you know, I, I said, I, I said that the rat Chuck, uh, same thing. I, I, we talked about it within the second time I've really met him. We talked about that. And I said, I thanked him for his openness. I thanked him for being able to talk about it. I thanked yeah. him for the support for me and it's someone I didn't even know really. You know what I mean? Like it just, like you said, so it's, how things come about and where you are in life, it happened. Things happen for a reason, right? And so, this is happening for me. I'm I'm getting supported, and then hopefully I'll be better support for for other people. There's a couple things I always say, Gerald, in a twelve <clears throat> twelve step program. The hardest step is the first one. The first one is admitting you have a problem. So, have you admitted you got a problem, or have you admitted you got a problem? Those are two different admits. Yep. And the other one I always say is can't change the past you can't change the future only the now i might die tonight i don't know everybody's like oh that's morbid it's the truth we don't know when that car's pulled so why am i worrying about three weeks down the road to to try and stay sober we have to stay in the moment that's not morbid what's morbid was getting behind the wheel when i was loaded oh that was morbid that could have been. God was that watching me. I never killed anybody. I drove yes. with my kids drunk all the time. Like I this, drove all the time. Yeah. Did you guys hear the story about this football player? Yeah. Like 156 miles an hour, as you Americans call it, miles per hour. Was, Not kilometers. What, what, yeah. What is that? Two, two, two something kilometers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, what, 240? Yeah. Like there's, it's just, it's like a, you know, life lost, uh, someone died, someone in the car was badly injured. And then you have, you know, he's in, in my opinion, he's, he's least, uh, important in this, but still what an um, because of the, mis- like the mistake that he made the stupidity, but nobody's ever made a good decision drinking. <laughs> really? Well, it, it shows the grip. Well, I did has, double right? down. I did double down <laughs> once when I shouldn't have, cause I was loaded and I won. And, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm stunned. I'm so, so listen, like, that doesn't mean I'm going to drink and go to the casino or anything. I'm just saying that, you know, when you're a few beers deep, you know, I mean, you know, you can, you're still somewhat, I'm just, I'm just, I shouldn't be an enabler, but you're right. It's true. Nothing good. Nothing good comes to drinking in my opinion, man. I, I'm sorry for the, for the bad timed humor there. No, it's good. You know, it's not bad time humor because those are our, those are our realities for us. Yeah. We were in some dark places. It did some dark, dark things. Not proud of them, but it got me here today to be able to be, because if I, this Kyle stuff, if I was still drinking, I couldn't do what I'm doing. 100% would be a train wreck and I'd be six beers deep already. 
it would be it would be very unlike me to end this show without making it about me. So I'll say this, Brent. We here at After the Whistle have had quite a week, okay? Uh, we, we won an Emmy for a project we did with Ty Domi and Rob Ray. We broke the Jack Eichel trade. And most importantly, had the most powerful interview and conversation with former players that I've ever had in my entire life. And I am so proud of you and your role in this whole shitstorm. And you should be very proud too. And not only that, be proud for everything you've accomplished. Everything you've accomplished. Hockey, life, and sobriety. I mean that, man. I, I, I really enjoyed chatting with you. And I knew... I knew we were going to have a great chat today just because, but I didn't know where the conversation was going to go. But I'm so grateful for you today. I really mean that. For, selfishly. Selfishly for me. I mean that. And I'm sure Gio probably feels yeah, the same I mean, way. I can't, yeah. I don't want to belabor the point, but it is. I said it earlier, and I appreciate it. And I thank you. I thank you. That's the only word that I can come up with is thanks for uh, doing this, and, and thanks for helping me um as well oh thanks for having me boys it was always good to catch up with you but our journeys together are just beginning you know Gio, we're there for you and for your family and everything that's going on there and you know Riv, that you're friends with with these guys this stuff is going to affect you too so don't you know yeah. we're all we're all here for each other i'm here for you guys and i'm for our, here everybody listening you need anything please never hesitate Rivs has really had to bear a lot of weight today. I look the size of those shoulders; he can do it. Let me you tell you, haven't something. seen what's off camera. Those are the fattest <laughs> shoulders I've the ever size, seen. The life. size of what's off camera right now. That's why he put his hands where they are. They're hiding a little extra. It's amazing how it, it goes from like a pat on the back to just tearing a guy down. This is I love being around these guys because they can never let you get too high, right? So. But Solps, uh, you know what? Listen, I mean, uh, when Petey said that uh, that you were going to come on here today, um, I, I, I mean, I, Petey, you remember what I had texted? I'm like, wow, this is truly amazing. And uh, you had you had a pretty special career in the NHL. You're an unbelievable defenseman, uh, right-handed defenseman. Which, <laughs> you know what? I mean you know what? I really appreciate what you had to say today. You're so honest. And I think you're going to help a lot of people. And I think that th that's what this is all about. That's why we, uh, you know, wanted to have you on today, just because uh, you're there to speak out. You're there to help. You're there to support. And, uh, you know, I can't, uh, I don't know Kyle Beach. And I just hope that uh, that young man can find some peace and he can find some healing. And I know that you had a lot to do with uh, his, his start and his, uh, of his process. So thank you very much for coming on today. It was absolutely amazing. That's a wrap on another episode of after the whistle. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter after the whistle and at Craig Reve 52 at the instigator 76. And you can find us as you already know on Apple, Spotify and YouTube and anywhere else where you can get your podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to spread the word.